Good morning. I'm sure most of you were expecting Professor Samuelson, who's better looking, more distinguished, and unfortunately has a stubborn case of mononucleosis. So this class didn't need to be delayed. I volunteered to fill in for him until he's on the mend. Some of you have taken my undergraduate classes. For those of you who haven't, I'm Professor Daniel Hudson. Since you're all graduate students, Daniel will be fine. Plus, it makes me feel younger. <laughs> now, fortunately for you, I'm a big believer that there's only one way to get better at writing. Write. <laughs> I know, I know. Novel concept. But you would be surprised <clears throat> at how many people think that Unlike other disciplines where practice makes perfect, creative writing is somehow immune to that philosophy. Now, before you start pelting me with rotten tomatoes for assigning you parts of Finnegan's Wake, let me first remind you of a small soiree my wife and I are hosting at our home this weekend. I know this may seem a tad unconventional, but this is something that we do every year for my graduate students. It helps me to get to know each one of you in a more intimate setting. You're getting a master's in comparative literature. You had to figure you'd get at least random. <laughs> Running into you is one thing, having to take your class is another. If I knew that was the case, never would have come back here. So drop it. I can't drop it and you know it, it's a requirement. Look, Nicole, as far as I'm concerned, the past is the past. I'm ready to move on as long as you are. How magnanimous of you. I don't know what you're so angry about. We had some good times together, some very good times. Problem not yours. And you don't think you should have told me? You never asked. Listen, now that I'm in your class, it's professor, student, that's it. Do you understand me? I promise I'll be completely appropriate. The last thing I want is to make you feel at all uncomfortable. Goodbye, Professor Hudson. I'll see you in class. Thank you. I mean, seriously, you need to chill. It's not that big a deal. Really? I have to be in class with him three times a week for one hour, sitting there staring at him, thinking about, well, you know. You had to expect you were gonna run into him at some point, so. That's exactly what he said. No, not on my first day, and certainly not as a teacher. This totally sucks. Cafe vanilla latte with oat milk? Thanks. I have to find a way to drop it. She said you couldn't. Yeah, exactly. That's why I need to find a way. Can I order a coffee? Sure. What can I get you? I know you from somewhere. Brandon. Brandon Davis. <laughs> Nicole? Got that coffee. House blend. Black. Professor Hudson. Advanced creative writing. Yeah. Yeah, I knew it. Hey, are you going to his party this weekend? I don't know, probably not. Really? See, I thought we were all expected to go. Oh. I hope you change your mind. Hmm. Huh. What was it all about? He's in my class, the class. He's cute. He wanted to know if I'm going to Daniel's party. And, are you? I don't know. Come on, you have to. Look, I'll go with you. You're not in the class. So, nobody's gonna know? <laughs> Since when did you start taking such an interest in my education? What education, girl? It's a party. <laughs> is, um, it would probably be that form if I didn't show up. See, don't worry, I have your back the entire time. That's exactly what I'm afraid of. Whatever. I 
with me, you'll try to have fun. I shouldn't have let you talk me into this. Come on, Nick, it's a party. Exactly <laughs> what I'm afraid of. Look, if you're not having a good time, we'll leave. Trust me, after a few drinks, you loosen up. Great. Hi. Welcome, guys. Welcome. Go on inside. Nicole, so glad you could make it. It's my wife, Valerie. <laughs> Pleasure to meet you. It's nice to meet you. Uh, this is my friend Zoe. Hi. Pleasure. And nice to meet you. I love your house. <laughs> well, go on in and make yourselves at home. Awesome. Thanks. <laughs> <clears throat> Professor Hudson. That was so awkward. Ah, uh, the worst is behind you. How about you go have fun, take a look around, I'll make the drinks. Okay, well, come find me later. Okay. okay. Wasn't sure you'd be here. Well, if it was fully up to me, I wouldn't. Zoe twisted my arm a bit. I'm glad she did. You look fantastic, by the way. I don't think I've ever seen that little number before. Daniel, don't talk to me like that. It's not funny and it's inappropriate. Hey, hey, hey. Relax. It's a party. Have a good time. I have to get Zoe her drink. Daniel throws one heck of a party, girl. <laughs> Does he? Who's that over there? Is he in your class, too? Oh. <laughs> Hello there. Hello to you. Hello. Brandon is my friend, Zoe. Hi. Hi, Zoe. Uh, well, if you don't mind, I'm gonna go get another drink. So, see ya. I was gonna come talk to you earlier, but you looked a little busy. Busy? Yeah, I saw you talking to Professor Hudson. So? Look, if there's something going on between you and our esteemed professor, that is absolutely none of my business. What do you mean by that? I didn't mean anything. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. <sighs> it's okay. Um, I just love your house, Ms. Hudson. It's just beautiful. Thank you. I actually jog down the street all the time. I love looking at all these old pre-war homes. Mm. I feel the same way. I just wish more people felt the way we do. It seems everybody wants new construction nowadays. Not me. Uh, I like homes with some history. Mm. Mm. Um, Dan, I, Professor Hudson talks about you all the time, you know. Really? Yeah, in class. Uh, do you teach at the university too? I guess lecture there sometimes. Creative writing? Oh, no. The arts aren't my thing. I can barely compose a text. I'm actually a veterinarian. A veterinarian, really? A 12-year-old me would be so jealous. <laughs> you wanted to be a vet? Desperately. So, what happened? Um, quickly realized I wouldn't pass all the science requirements. Is that what you always wanted to be? I guess. I've always felt more comfortable around animals. They never disappoint you. Mm. Well, uh, I should probably go find my friend, Zoe. Um, thanks again, Mrs. Hudson. You really have a beautiful home. <laughs> Well, I see you after this night by drinking. Yeah. Wait, where's your jacket? <laughs> Somewhere. Hey, okay, wait here. The cold mm -hmm. air will be good for you anyway. Okay. I'll be right back. Don't move. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where are you from? Hello again. Oh. oh. Here we go. What the hell? It's just me. Is that pepper spray? 
You should keep that out. It does you no good in there. Somebody's gonna grab you and incapacitate you before you even get the chance to reach for it. How comforting. <laughs> what are you even doing? Just making sure you're okay. You have a funny way of showing that. Do you need a ride home? What's going on here? Nothing, just seeing if Nicole needed a ride home. Our car's already on the way. After he scared the living hell out of me. No, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> It's really chivalry, Brandon, but I'll take it from here. And that would be us. Come on. Bye, Nicole. Think everybody had a good time tonight? It certainly look that way. What's that supposed to mean? I'm not a fool, Daniel. Please don't treat me like one. Valerie, I have no idea what you're talking about. I saw you talking to her. Who? Oh, each one of them. Nicole. Uh, she's a former student of mine from a few years ago. I could tell. Valerie, I'm tired of having this conversation. I'm a professor. My job is more than just teaching and grading papers. I need to forge a connection. I can't do this again, Daniel. You promised. I know, and I can only say I'm sorry so many times. It's just... She just seems like your type. Hey, you're my type. Listen, all of those girls that were here tonight, all of them, they're all at home. And I'm here. I'm here with you. You understand that? Come on. Let's go to bed. Hello. Hello. Daniel, is that you? Daniel. Daniel. I'm sorry, I can come back. What happened to an apple for the teacher? No, it's, it's not what you think. It never is. Valerie, please. How dare you? First you call me last night, and then you leave flowers outside my door? Call you? What are you talking about? And what, you think I sent you those? Who else? Maybe it was that guy who was drooling all over you at the party. Brandon, he wasn't drooling. Besides, it's none of your business. Hey, take it easy. You can't be serious. <laughs> Come on, Nicole, I know you felt it too. What part of me telling you you were the biggest mistake I ever made don't you understand? I know, I know. I guess I can't help myself. You're pathetic. The heart wants what it wants. Quoting Emily Dickinson, really? Could you be a bigger cliche? Nicole, wait. When you change your mind, you know where to find me.
Ew, he did that with his wife right there? No, she was gone. She left as soon as I showed up. Still, it's gross. That's his specialty, gross and thoroughly inappropriate. Mm. What are you gonna do about it? What else can I do other than tell him no? Eventually he'll get the picture. Nicole. And look who just showed up. Hi, Zoe. Hi, Brandon. My break's over, I gotta go. Bye. Can we talk? I guess so. Great. I think I owe you an apology. I should not have asked you about the professor. That was none of my business. It's not. But we're good. Tell you what, how about a coffee on the house? Ooh, a coffee on the house, okay. Yeah, how can I refuse that? Okay, I'll be right back. Well, you're not gonna ask me what I want? You don't trust your barista? I guess I have to. Um, you know, I would trust you to give me an honest opinion on the story I'm writing for Professor Hudson's class. Creative writing's not my strongest subject. I'm kind of more of a computer tech guy. So that's what this visit's really about? No, no, absolutely not. No, I just figured wouldn't hurt to ask. You don't ask, you don't get, right? Was that a yes? Super casual. But I will be honest about your story. Well, I would expect nothing less. <laughs> Tonight? Yeah, um, I just have a shift later. I have to close up at seven. You wanna say eight? Gold Moon Pub? I can do that. Great, I'll see you there. And I'll take a rain check on that free coffee. So, I can see why you choose computer science. You thought I was kidding. This has been really helpful. I think I'm gonna have something pretty good to turn in. May I ask, um, why are you taking this class? Uh, my dad is paying for my school, but he told me that I have to major in something, and I quote, that wasn't I actually enjoy. You know, expand my horizons a little bit. Besides, I'm not really in a rush to leave the university, so. 
But you, you think that's really weird, huh? Actually, no. I find it refreshing. Most people are so eager to get out and start making money. Oh. No, I'll make plenty of money. Oh. <laughs> yeah, computer science, especially my degree, IT security, it's like the most in-demand job there is, so, yeah, there's no real rush. You know, I don't know a thing about computers. <laughs> Miss Atkins? Professor Hudson? Aren't you going to introduce me? Brandon Davis. Ah, oh, Mr. Davis, you're in my class. Hope I'm not interrupting date night. No, no, it's not a date. Uh, Nicole was actually just helping me on the paper for your class. You've chosen an excellent study partner. She's my most promising student. Hmm. I look forward to reading your work. Can we get you a drink or something? Oh, no, no, no. I'm actually meeting someone here. Mrs. Hudson. No, 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 no. This is not a place Valerie would like. Much too noisy. Well, I hope whoever this friend is doesn't suddenly stand you up. I'd hate to think you came all the way out here for nothing. Thank you for your concern, but not to worry. I'm sure he'll be here. He? What's his name? A colleague of mine. You probably don't know him. I know a lot of people. Try me. Professor Crowley. Never heard of him. Well, then maybe he doesn't exist. Jake, be right there. Remind me, did we make a bet? Because if we did, you owe me. You two kids enjoy yourselves. Well, I don't know about you, but I could use a refill. Well, here we are. Oh, here we are. I had a really nice time tonight. So did I. We should address the elephant in the room. You mean the classroom. <laughs> Truth is, um, after graduation, I had a brief affair with Daniel. I took a class of his as an undergrad. I had no idea he was married. Nicole, you don't have to justify yourself to me. Still, um, it's important to me that you know that. Were you in love with him? I don't know. It was really, um, it's just a fling. And is it over? For me, yes. Uh, but he made a pass at me in his office the other day. You're kidding. Maybe I should have a talk with him. No, uh, I appreciate that, but it's better just to let it go. No, they don't give up. Unless you fight back, people like that, they don't, they don't stop. I agree, but please let me handle it. I'll just, I'll talk to the dean. Sounds good. If you... Look, I'd like to invite you in. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, I, I get it. It's cool. Um, see you in class. Yeah. Oh, lock your door. You never know what kind of weirdos are hanging around. Why do you say that? Just being a good citizen. Hey, um, I forgot to ask you earlier. Did you leave flowers by my door earlier today? Flowers? No. Didn't even know where you lived until now. Were they pretty? Beautiful. Well, then... Yes, I did. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Have a good time? Oh, jeez. Val, what are you still doing up? Just wanted to see if you had a good time with Jacob. I did, actually. It was nice to see him again. Mm. 
He didn't bring you flowers, did he? Okay, so that's what this is about. It, it never is. Look, Valerie, Nicole is going through something very personal right now. If I could tell you I would, then you'd understand. Unfortunately, it'd be a major breach of confidentiality. Oh, of course. You've always been such a stickler for protocol. I'm too tired for this right now, Oh, How surprising. You're always willing to address everybody else's concerns except for mine. Especially when it comes to a young blonde with a nice smile. I love how you're willing to believe the worst of me. The best of everyone else, but the worst of me. Everyone else tells the truth, right? Nobody else has ulterior motives? Stop talking, Daniel. It makes you sound guilty. So everyone knows I have received the many emails and text messages regarding grades from your last assignment. I am just as curious to know your grades as you are. Going through your work is not like grading a math test where there's only one right answer. Each one of you has his or her own unique personality and that comes through in your writing. But I have to say, I have really been enjoying what I've been reading so far. <laughs> There's some real talent in this room. Then again, there are some students who are struggling. For example, you took my oh, you had stepped through a French black and white film. Your air of self-assurance, the blonde hair draped around your shoulders that I wish to run my fingers through. Okay, enough of that. You guys get the point. <clears throat> so, Mr. Davis, I would encourage you to see me in my office so I can help get you back on track before I grade your paper. Okay, now let's talk about the concept of a passionate point of view. Brandon, I'm so sorry he's being such an ass. Yeah, well, who cares what he thinks anyways, right? I gotta go. I have my meeting with the dean. See if I could drop the class. Great. Well, hey, if you drop, I drop. Because I can't pass this class without you. <laughs> We're in this together. Bye. This is one of the core courses you need for your degree, Miss Atkins. It's one of the reasons we brought Professor Hudson on when Professor Samuelson fell ill, rather than just canceling the class. I understand that, Dean Michaels. It's just, um, I'm putting myself through grad school. I don't have the luxury of not working. And I can sympathize. I paid my own way through college, every step of the way. But most graduate students have jobs. If we don't make accommodations for all of them, we wouldn't be able to schedule a single class. So my hands are tied. Miss Atkins, excuse me for asking this, but are you sure there's no other reason you want to drop this class? Like what? I don't know. You tell me. Because the safety of our students is paramount to Kinzer. Extenuating circumstances might allow you to make a dispensation. That is, if there were other reasons. Just my schedule, Team Michaels. That's all. Okay. Thank you. So why not just take a next semester? She nixed that, which I expected. She did give me an opportunity to tell the truth. And you took it, right? Are you serious? I didn't want to get into my private life. <laughs> Nick, that's what he's counting on. That's how guys like this get away with that kind of crap. Look, I made a mistake and I want to keep it to myself. <sighs> Look, I'm sorry, I just... You're right, and I support you 
But I want you to do what's best for you. Thanks. Besides, Daniel's starting to act really crazy. You should have seen him today. He had the nerve to call up Brandon in front of the entire class and make fun of his writing, all because he knows I'm hanging out with him. That's messed up. But you see my point. If he's acting crazy about that, can you imagine what he would do if I got him? Oh, yeah, yeah, that sounds great. Yeah, 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 I'd like that, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, of course, yeah, why wouldn't I? <laughs> yep. <clears throat> uh, Val, uh, I gotta go. Hey, I didn't hear you come in. Yeah, you seemed into your call. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that was Carter. He was just reminding me about some department event we have tonight. Tonight? Yeah, I thought I told you about it. I'm sure I did. No, in fact, we were supposed to have dinner at Sullivan's tonight, remember? Well, we could always have an early dinner there. I don't need to meet Carter until later. Later tonight? That's right. Was it for spouses too? <laughs> Trust me. Unless you're in the mood for an ambient, you're not gonna let it come. So between no way and forget about it. Well, that doesn't sound good. Yeah, for all their talk about putting the student first, if they need to bend the rules a bit, they can't be bothered. But you didn't tell her, of course it would have mattered. Trust me, I know how these conversations if, go. If you would have told her that he was harassing you, then she would have had to let you drop it. She would have had to have done something. I mean, in this day and age, she would have been more concerned about losing her job than his. Well, I wasn't about to tell her we had an affair. And the flowers, I can't prove he did it. And him showing up at the restaurant, he had an excuse for that too. So I just come off as a crazy person if I started talking about all that stuff. Nicole, you can never come off as a crazy person. Besides, uh, all the real evidence, what he says to me, the way he touches me, nobody sees that, and I can't prove any of it. Wait. He touched you? In the office, I told you. He came on to me. Right, I, I just didn't realize. If I'd have known that, I... What? <laughs> what? Nothing, just... Never, never mind. Professor Hudson. Mr. Davis, I'm a bit of a rush. If you'd like to make an appointment, I can make time later. Hey, what the hell do you think you're doing? Stay away from her. Who? You know who. Nicole Atkins. Stay away from her. Huh, did she send you? No, don't worry about who sent me. I'm warning you. Stay away from her. I could have you expelled. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you'd have me. I could just handle this another way. Cool. We need to talk. Yes, we do. I suppose you're here to apologize. Apologize? What? That little stunt this morning. What stunt? Your bodyguard, the one you sent to try to intimidate me or whatever the hell he was trying to do. Wait, are you talking about Brandon? What did he do? Exactly what you told him to do. 
They're so easy to manipulate at that age, aren't they? I didn't tell him to do anything. Really? He's not bright enough to come up with that on his own. He's a stupid boy, Nicole. Is that what you want now? A boy? I thought you had better taste. Look, I don't care what's going on with you and Brandon. I came here to talk to you about my grade. Your grade? Okay, I'm game. Let's talk about your grade. An F? Really? An F? I'm not surprised you'd be so petty, but I didn't think you'd be so blatant about it. Are you referring to your paper, the one I graded last night? You and I both know that paper did not deserve an F. I happen to agree. That's why I gave you an A. I thought it was excellent. Not only was the writing first rate, but I also took into consideration how challenging your choice was. Here, take a look. See? I don't understand. When I looked at it this morning, it said F. Maybe you looked at the wrong entry. Maybe there was a glitch in the system. Or maybe your new boyfriend hacked into the system and changed the grade to make me look bad. It's computer science, right? I'm sure he knows how to do that sort of thing. Don't blame this on Brandon. If I were you, Nicole, I'd be careful around that little creep. I mean, what's the attraction anyway? There's him. And there's me. Don't touch me. You can drop the act, Nicole. What the hell are you talking about? This whole grade misunderstanding? We could have handled this over the phone. Why are you really here? What do you mean? I think you know. We could go somewhere. Just the two of us. Stay the hell away from me. Why didn't you tell me you were gonna do something? I didn't want you to try and talk me out of it. Talk out of what, exactly? I just had a little talk with him. Told him to leave you alone. And you didn't, like, physically attack him, right? Because that's what he insinuated. Really stupid. You get yourself kicked out of school. Uh, I know. It won't happen again, I promise. I just... I hate the way he's treating you. And now he's playing mind games with your grades. Somebody's got to stop him. It doesn't have to be you. Look, I appreciate that you stood up for me. It was really sweet. But I can handle him, OK? OK. <laughs> OK. Great. Now let's stop talking about it. I agree. Let's talk about us. That was nice. Very. Hey, where are you going? Coffee. Oh, coffee. <laughs> yeah, there's actually this uh, cute little coffee shop down the street. They make fresh croissants. Oh, is it good? Really good. You don't mind? Need my exercise for the day? I don't know. I think we might have got plenty of exercise last night. 
You look really pretty. Thank you. You go back to sleep. I'll be back in a few. Don't worry, I'm not going anywhere. Line was crazy. Brandon. 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 getting to know each other. I'm very sorry. You're losing time. Whoever did this is still out there. Look, Miss Atkins, it's not clear that anyone actually did this. There's no signs of a break-in. Nothing's been stolen. My people are still interviewing the neighbors, but so far... He didn't just drop it. Well, we don't know that. Which is why we have a systematic approach... Perfectly healthy 20-somethings don't just have a heart attack or a stroke or... A medical condition that can kill you in a split second. And you didn't see him take anything? Any drugs earlier in the night? Maybe prescription meds? No, nothing. Someone must have gotten in. Did you leave the door unlocked? No. Does anyone besides you have a key? Just my landlord. Wait, there is someone. So you do know Nicole Atkins? Yes, she's a student of mine. And Brandon Davis? Uh, yes. I believe he's also a student of mine. I regret to tell you that Mr. Davis was found dead in Miss Atkins' home this morning. Oh my God, that's horrible. What happened? It's an open investigation, so I really can't discuss it. I understand. Did you know that Nicole and Brandon were in a relationship? No, that wouldn't be any of my business. And where were you this morning? This morning? Why? Just try... Uh, here in the house. I was preparing a lecture. Can anyone corroborate that? Uh, my wife? Yes, he was in his office. I brought him coffee before I went to the clinic. I was working on my computer. You guys can check the time that way or something, right? We can come back to that later. Do you have a key to Miss Atkins' house? <laughs> a key? Why? Why would I have a key to her house? She said you did. She also said that you two had a relationship. <laughs> what? That's, that's... She has some old text messages that seem to back up her story. 
<clears throat> it wasn't a relationship. It was, she was an infatuated student and I, it was just, it was just one time. And after this one time, she gave you a key to her house. No, she didn't. She's lying. She's only saying that because I lost interest in her. She's being spiteful. I'm told that you and Mr. Davis had a confrontation. Is it because you were jealous of the relationship between Mr. Davis and Miss Atkins? What? No, we never had a confrontation. I wasn't jealous. Look, I think I've answered enough of your questions. Either arrest me or don't. I don't have enough to arrest you. For now. Then I'll show you to the door. <laughs> I'll be in touch, Professor Hudson. You lied to me. Calm down, it's not as bad as you think it is. Don't you tell me to calm down. I saw the way you looked at that girl at the party, the way you were holding her arm, and then she brings flowers to your office. How big a fool do you take me for? You promised me it would never happen again. Would you stop thinking about yourself for one second? The police were here questioning me about a student's death. It's a bigger issue than a one night stand. And did you do it? What, kill that boy? I would never hurt anyone. Really? You don't think you've hurt me? I don't know what to believe anymore, Daniel. How do I know that you're not lying to me again? Valerie. Thanks for letting me stay here. Are you kidding me? I wouldn't dare let you go back to your place after what happened. You know you can stay here as long as you need. You're a good friend. So, you never told me you gave Daniel a key. That was before I knew he was married. And I had forgotten all about it until the detective asked. So maybe he did have something to do with Brandon's death. Should have heard the way he talked about him. But of course, he denies having a key, and the detective says he has an alibi. Alibi? His wife. She says he was home all morning. Well, then, that's that. Maybe not. She's got a lot to lose if he's accused of murder. Maybe she's protecting him, even if he is a lying snake. I mean, honestly, it doesn't look like they're going to investigate him anyway, so... Unless more evidence shows up. Maybe I need to find that evidence myself. Nicole, what are you thinking? I hope you're not gonna do something crazy, are you? No. No, of course not. Good morning, everyone. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Professor Jeffrey Forrester. I'm the Assistant Dean of the English Department. In light of recent events, Professor Hudson has taken a leave of absence, so I'll be taking over the class. So before we begin today's discussion, I would like to say a few words about the recent tragedy. As most of you know, one of your classmates passed away unexpectedly last weekend. You might be going through a range of emotions. In response, our counseling center has taken the liberty to bring in well-qualified grief counselors. So if you need to, please make use of them. I didn't have anything to do with that boy's death. You know that. If the police thought I did, I wouldn't be sitting here with you right now. Daniel, I didn't say that. But you are being accused of sexual misconduct by one of your students. So I have no other option but to put you on administrative leave until the university finishes conducting its own investigation. I'm sure you understand. 
No, I don't understand. I haven't done anything wrong. This is my reputation we're talking about here. You can't do this to me. I already have. Now I suggest you leave before you make matters worse. The hell are you doing in my office? The drawer is unlocked. Haven't you done enough damage already? I've lost my job. My wife's threatening to leave me. I'm being questioned about some student's death, which I had nothing to do with. Oh, so you're the victim now? You did all this to yourself, and we both know you're lying about Brandon. You had a key to my house. Get out of my office and watch your back, Nicole. This isn't funny. Daniel! Daniel, stop messing around. I'm serious. Are you crazy? You broke into Daniel's office. I told you, the door is unlocked. Whatever. And then you say you got stalked at the library? Yeah. Are you sure it was Daniel? Who else would it be? You need to go to the detective and tell her everything. Tell her I stole a bunch of files from Daniel's office? She'd probably arrest me. Well, what about the security cameras at the library? I mean, maybe they caught Daniel on tape. The least you could do is go to them and ask them to check it out. Even if I could prove he was at the library, they would just say he's a professor. He's at the library. No big deal. I need to find something more. I need to find a connection between him and this girl, Rebecca Reese. Do you know her? I've never seen her in my life. Neither have I. I did find an address for her mother up in Hartwell. I'm gonna drive up there tomorrow and see if I could talk to her.
Yes, may I help you? Are you um, Mrs. Reese, Mrs. Pamela Reese? Oh, please, no solicitors. Uh, no, uh, I'm here about your daughter. You are Becca Reese's mother, aren't you? Were you a friend of hers? Uh, no, not exactly. I'm sorry, this just isn't a good time. It's about Daniel Hudson. Thank you. So you didn't know my daughter? I'm sorry, no. I read about her in the newspaper. Rebecca, Becca to everyone else, was the first in our family to go to college, and she loved it there. <laughs> I practically had to beg her to come home for Thanksgiving. <laughs> Anyway, second semester, she fell hard for her English professor. He was young and handsome. I figured it was harmless. I mean, after all, back in high school, I had a few crushes myself on young teachers. <laughs> Rebecca was so excited when he began to take an interest in her. He would invite her to his office after hours to go over her work. According to her, they were becoming more than professor and student. Mrs. Reese, did Becca have an affair with Professor Hudson? She said no. And I believed her. But thinking back, I just... I just don't know. But he certainly made his intentions clear, that's for sure. A few months later, she was dead. <laughs> Police said it was an overdose. It's hard to argue. Drugs were found in her system. <laughs> they told me that it was not too uncommon, this situation. Young, naive girl goes off to school, has no experience with drugs, takes too many, and there you go. You didn't believe that? I knew my daughter. She didn't take drugs. I mean, she certainly didn't take any of those. And she certainly wouldn't have killed herself. He did it to her. I'm sure of it. So, you're a detective now? No, but after what I just told you, don't you think you should arrest Daniel Hudson? On what charge? Murder. Look, no, there's no evidence of that. None. There's nothing tying him to Rebecca Reese's death. Did he have an alibi? Did you look into that? No, because it was a cut and dried overdose. There is no reason to look into anything like that. Her mother disagrees. And her mother, who, believe me, I pity. She was always looking for it to be someone else's fault. Okay, well, what about the fact that they had an affair? Isn't that important? Again, there is no proof of that. Nothing beyond what the mother suspected. Well, we know he has a habit of sleeping with his students. And that, well, inappropriate, is not illegal. So as long as the student is willing and of legal age, that is a university matter not a police one. What about Brandon? Did you find out anything else? No, the blood work and the toxicology haven't come back yet. As soon as I have the results, I will call you. So what am I supposed to do until then? Just sit and wait for him to come for me? I really wouldn't worry about that. Really? Nicole, please. Just, in the future, leave the detective work to us, okay? Thanks. some hard evidence that Daniel did something wrong. 
So that's it. As far as the police are concerned. What are you gonna do about it? There's one other person that might be able to help me. Who? Valerie. Professor Hudson's wife? If anybody knows Daniel's secrets, it's gotta be her, right? Yeah, but you said yourself, she's probably protecting him. There's no way she's gonna help you. She's been lied to and humiliated by Daniel for years. Maybe if I tell her what I know about Becca Reese, she'll change her mind. What have I got to lose? I don't have a good feeling about this. Hello? Valerie? Who is this? It's Nicole, Nicole Atkins. I'm the student who- What do you want, Nicole? To see you. I have some information you'll need that you'll want. What is it? It's better to discuss in person, but I, I can meet you. Come to the house tomorrow at 11. Daniel will be gone by then. What do you think? I think Danny did a real number on that poor woman. That's exactly why she might be willing to talk. Daniel? Valerie, Daniel! Daniel. You're really lucky, you know that? Instead of taking his own life, he might have taken it out on you. I've seen that happen too many times. So you do believe he's a killer? I believe he was cornered. Felt the walls closing in. He lost his job, his wife, his house, his whole reputation. It was a perfect storm. Enough to make anyone snap. So you still don't think he had something to do with Brandon's death? Not until I see evidence of a crime. How's his wife? She's in shock. The paramedics say she'll be okay. At least quickly. What now? We have your statement. If I have any more questions, I know how to reach you. You're free to go. Great. I know this sounds strange, but 
Who would have figured Daniel's too arrogant to kill himself? Too arrogant? You know, like, he thought he was smarter than everyone. He felt he could get out of any... Somebody like that, when they realize that they can't get away with it anymore, that's when they decide to check out. I guess you're right. You sure you want to leave? You know, you can stay as long as you want. It's time, Zoe. Daniel's dead. I have to get my life back. Please, just one more night. I'll be fine. Trust me. All right. Well, you know you're welcome back anytime. And you know you're the greatest friend anyone could have. Thank you for everything. I know. You're welcome. Hello? Brandon? Nicole, you need to be careful. Careful? Daniel's not done. But he's dead. And that's what he wants you to believe. No, no, I saw him hanging by a rope. He's always wanted you, and he still does. Detective Larson. And did I wake you? No, no, I'm I'm up. I wanted to let you know that the autopsy results came in. Brandon died of an overdose of ketamine. Sometimes it's called special K. It's a party drug. So you see, it's exactly like we first thought. Just a sad, tragic accident. Sp special K, wait a minute. Isn't that what Becca Reese died of? I believe so. Uh, we've been seeing this problem on campus for a few years now. How did I mean, tell you what, you get some rest. We can talk tomorrow if you have any other questions. Okay, detective. Thank you.
excuse me. Can I help you? Um, I'm a little embarrassed about the help I need. No need to be embarrassed. You not believe some of the books people ask for. That's the thing, it's not uh, really a book. Um, follow me sometimes? What a creepster. Right? Anyway, um, I was here studying the other night and I swear I saw him hiding behind a bookshelf. I need to make sure it's him before I confront him. So I was wondering if um, I could see the video footage. I did see a camera where I was sitting. Wow. I don't know, but that is messed up. Really messed up. Um, I'd be so grateful. Sure. All right, but you can't tell anyone or I'd get fired and I like my job. No one, I promise. Cross my heart. All the cameras are numbered and the footage is date and time stamped. So it's pretty easy to find what you're looking for. It's great. Here we go. Right there, where that person goes from one book to another. Let me get a picture. Thanks. One answer. Hi, can I speak to Detective Larson? Can I leave a message? Please tell her to call Nicole Atkins as soon as she can. Thank you. really important to tell you. What is it? Can I come in? Okay, you're in. Say what you've got to say. Do you know a girl named Rebecca Reese? No. She was one of Daniel's students. Former students. They had an affair about a year ago. Never heard of her. She's dead. Really? How sad. She died from a drug overdose. Special K, heard of that? Can't say that I have. Maybe you've heard of ketamine. What's your point? Brandon died from an overdose of ketamine too. Did he? You're a veterinarian, right? You have access to that drug? Are you seriously coming into my house and accusing me of killing two people after sleeping with my husband, falsely accusing him of murder and driving him to suicide? Brandon didn't take drugs. Rebecca didn't take drugs. Both of them had a connection to Daniel, which means they have a connection to you. So yes, I am accusing you. And why would I kill these two people who I don't even know? Rebecca's obvious. You found out she was sleeping with Daniel. You punished her. As for Brandon, I think you found Daniel's key, snuck into my house, and ran into Brandon instead. Wrong place, wrong time. <laughs> what a nice little story. I can see why Daniel thought so highly of your writing. Just because a bunch of stupid college kids took a recreational drug that I just happened to carry in my clinic doesn't prove a thing. The police have already looked into this, and well, they don't... I also know that you've been following me. What? In the library? Oh, that's ridiculous. Want to see? What were we gonna do? Follow me home and finish the job you botched the first time? Thought so. Yeah, this whole time I thought Daniel was stalking me, but it was you. The police are gonna want to see that. Let me tell you something, Nicole. You've got it all wrong. I didn't kill Rebecca Reese to punish her. I killed Rebecca Reese to punish Daniel. And I didn't kill Brandon by mistake. I killed him on purpose to punish you, to make you feel what I felt, the loss of someone you love. If I can't have happiness, why should you?
patient lives. Valerie, please, you don't have to do this. No, he was married. I'm sorry. Oh, you poor thing. You think I haven't heard this before? I hate it, Daniel. You know, it didn't look that way at the party. You two were drooling all over each other. It was pretty disgusting. That's why I called you that night. You confirmed what I had already suspected. It was at that moment that I realized I had to let Daniel go. I just had to figure out the right way to go about it. And using you to drive him to suicide just seemed like the perfect solution. What are you gonna do? Let you suffer the same fate as Brandon. That's crazy. The police will see a pattern. They'll know it's you. Well, that's why I couldn't use the ketamine on Daniel. So I crushed up some ordinary painkillers and I mixed it in his nightly cocktail. And then I strangled him in his sleep. Bastard weighed a ton. It took me two hours to get out there on that rope. But with you, that's a different story. I think the ketamine will work just fine. Broken hearted student found dead on campus from the same drug that claimed her boyfriend. It's tragic, but yet poetic at the same time. Don't you think? Come on, Nicole. You know this can only end one way. So, what's the big news? Okay, you ready? Hit me. <laughs> I got a letter back from Whittendale Press. What? They accepted my story. I'm oh. going to be published. Oh my god! Congratulations, <laughs> girl! Thank you. <laughs> I dedicate it to Brandon. Aww. I bet you miss him. I do. So, have you thought about what you're gonna do after graduation? Maybe go up to the mountains, spend the summer there, take some time to process everything, maybe write a novel. You know, I've got a crazy idea for a story. They do say, write what you know. Yes, they do. And I have a lot of material to choose from. No one's ever gonna believe it. No, they won't. Stories really crazy. <laughs>